Lewis House is an entrepreneur and host of the School of Greatness podcast, one of the top leadership and personal development podcasts on iTunes. He went from growing up depressed, becoming broke, and sleeping on his sister's couch to changing the lives of millions of people through his podcasts, videos, books, and events. And today we're gonna to learn his best advice on how to get a clearer vision for your life. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and every morning I give you a shot of espresso to help you believe in yourself more and start your day with confidence. So good morning. I believe in you, and let's do this. Lewis Howes, tell us how to have a clear vision. The first one that most people come to me is they don't have a clear vision of what they want. They want a better life, they want to make more money, they want to have a better relationship, but they're not clear. And the greatest minds and the greatest achievers are very specific and clear on their vision. It's so certain to them what it is, they can see it, they can feel it, they can taste it. And as an athlete, I used to visualize how I wanted to create my sport. I wanted to create myself in sports. And um, vision was very powerful for me back then as it is now for business world. So the first thing is vision that people need to get clear on. Vision in sports, we always start each season with a clear vision on the chalkboard in the locker room. What are we looking to achieve this season? Do we want to make the playoffs? Do we want to win the championship? We are always very clear. It's written up on the board. Every day we walk in the locker room, we see our vision. We know what we're working towards. So for me, I have a board with my vision and every day I look at it and I'm very clear and specific about what it is, when it's going to happen each six months to a year, each season of my life. So I just try to translate all that I learned as an athlete, because that's all I knew, into life. And um, it's helped me get to at least where I'm at currently. Most people hate their lives because you're playing out somebody else's vision. You're living out somebody else's version of your life instead of living your own. You know that, but you're unsure of what your next step should be. This is the thinking that needs to end, and it starts with having a clear vision for your life. For me, I want to solve the world's biggest problem. I think the world's biggest problem is people don't believe in themselves enough. I think, give me any other problem. Cancer, drug addiction, war, whatever, whatever big problem you say is a problem, the energy crisis, whatever it is, I think it's solvable. I think it's going to be an entrepreneur who solves it. And I think the entrepreneur who should have solved it is instead working some corporate job that she hates. I think that's the problem. That's what I'm trying to unlock. That's, that's my vision for my life for the rest of my life. I'm recording this on my birthday, May 20, uh, 2020. I turned 40, it's my 40th birthday. And people asked me on my Instagram this morning, how are you gonna spend the day? How do you wanna spend the day? I'm, like, I'm making videos. It's, I went, I went, had a nice breakfast with my wife. We had a nice walk. I, I want to, I want to make content. I want to make videos. I want to do this for you guys. I want to, I want, this is the vision I have for my life. This isn't just something that I do for work and then, Ooh, let me go do all the stuff that I enjoy and then just kind of show up for work that I hate. No, this is, it's all together. This is the vision for my life. This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It may not be YouTube videos but helping people believe in themselves, unlocking the world's biggest problem is something I'm never gonna accomplish. It's never gonna happen. It's an impossible goal. And I love it because it reminds me of Ted Turner and his father. Ted Turner, billionaire entrepreneur, founder of CNN, um, owner of the Atlanta Braves. I don't know if he still owns it actually, but used to anyway. Um, his father became a millionaire when he was when Ted, when Ted was a young adult, like 18 to 21, somewhere in there, um, in the advertising business. And he reached his goal and then he killed himself because he hit his goal and he had nothing else to do. He didn't have the next goal because hitting the goal itself is not is not the thing. It's never the thing. You, you've noticed that. You felt it. When you've hit a goal, it feels kind of empty. It's like, yay, celebrate. And then, well, now what? When I sold my business, yay, celebrate. Well, now what? It's not about just hitting the goal. It's about enjoying the process of what you're doing every day. And so Ted said after his father died, he took over the business, built it, grew it, you know, became a billionaire in the process. I'm skipping a ton of steps, but, <laughs> but he said his goal was then to set a goal, set a vision for himself so big that he would never accomplish it in his lifetime, that it would never happen. 
And then he wakes up every day and he tries to make it happen. My vision is to solve the world's biggest problem that people don't believe in themselves and I need to change that. And it's never going to happen. I'm going to be 120 years old and still doing it in my rocking chair and it's never going to hit the entire world. But I'm going to try and continue doing it until I die. And hopefully with each video I unlock a few more people. That's what I'm talking about having a vision. When you have that kind of clarity for what you want to do in your life, when you know who you are and then have the courage and confidence to actually start living it, it makes you care less what other people think about you. It makes you care less what their agenda is for you. It gives you the confidence to actually step into the life that you want to live. And it may not happen right away. It's not going to happen like tomorrow, like, hey, now I'm getting all these results. But to bridge the gap between where you want to be and where you are right now is having that clear vision for who you are, what you want to accomplish, and the confidence to step into it. Now, I wrote a whole book about it. It's called Build to Serve. There's a three-step process that I follow in here that I'm going to quickly break down in this video for you that I think if you follow it will change your life. But before that, I've got a quick message from Lewis. Good book by my man, Evan Carmichael, Built to Serve. If you wanna learn about your purpose and how to become a better leader in the world, I love this. He says, this is the starting point for everything. If you're confused about what to do next, if you're pressured by others to fit in or live their version of your life, if you feel held back because of people judging you, it's because you don't know who you are and what you stand for. You gotta figure out who you are and what you want and how you can serve other people. Okay, my three-step process. What's in the book? How do we do it? How do we get that vision for our life and start to get results? Happiness, purpose, service. Three steps. The who, the why, the how. Let's go through it quickly. The who. You figure out your one word most important core value. Who are you? What is your most important core value? For me, it's belief. For you, it might be something else. It might be freedom, it might be belong, it might be care, it might be honesty, it might be loyalty, it might be creativity, it might be stability. There's lots of different options. I've never had somebody's who be something negative. I've never had somebody's one word who most important core value be hate, destruction, right? We're good. We want to be good. We may not always act like it, but we want to be good at the core. What is your most important core value? Your next steps depend on what it is, right? The person who values creativity versus the person who values stability are two totally different people. If you try to make somebody who loves creativity and force them into a box of stability, they're gonna hate their life. And if you're trying to take somebody who loves stability and force tons of change and creativity on them, they're gonna hate their life, right? This isn't about copying somebody else's life, it's about building the best life for you. So it starts with figuring out what is your most important core value? What is your who? Most people never even thought about it. It's, it's one of the most important exercises I think you can ever go through. There's exercise in the book to do it, but really just think about what is your most important core value as a human being. Step number two is your why. Your why is your purpose. Your purpose comes from your pain. The thing you struggled with the most in life is the thing you wanna help other people with. So for me, believe is my who, awesome. I could believe in anybody, I believe in everybody. I believe you know the truck driver outside could be a better truck driver. Like, uh, give me anybody, I'm gonna inject him with more belief. It's just gonna happen. I love helping entrepreneurs because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur and especially the startup entrepreneurs because that's who I was. That's where I felt the lowest of the low. So think about when did you feel the lowest of the low where you had no self-confidence, no self-worth, no self-esteem, feeling totally hopeless, worthless, ashamed, embarrassed. What was that moment for you, right? Not physical pain, emotional pain. Those are the people who you want to help. Those are the people that you want to serve for the rest of your life. It will never get old because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur and felt worthless. For the rest of my life, believing in entrepreneurs who feel hopeless, they don't know the path, but they know they're capable of more, will fill me up for life, for life. So when you figure out your who and you figure out your why, those two components serve you for the rest of your life. It's the greatest gift that you can give yourself as well as anybody else around you who feels dissatisfied with where they're at in their lives right now. And in step number three is the how. And the how breaks down to, well, how did you get out of the hole you were in? What did you do to not struggle as much? So for me, it was modeling success. For me, it was learning from Steve Jobs and A.P. Janini and my parents and Howard Schultz and Kanye West and all the people that profiled on my channel, learning from them, seeing how they got started, seeing how they overcame, right? Bill Gates was really the first person I modeled in business and that saved my company. And so how I got out of it is then teachable. How you got out of it is teachable. That's how you serve, right? You're built to serve. You know helping other people fills you up. 
you know that you figured out your who, your most important core value, your why, your purpose comes from your pain. Great. Knowing that alone isn't enough. What are you going to do? How you got out of the hole you are in is teachable, is replicatable, is a process that you can duplicate to help others get out of it faster. I'm making content today for 19 year old Evan because I know there's lots of people who currently are 19 year old Evan. A lot of you watching right now are 19 year old Evans. Now, how I do it will change with time. How you do it will change with time, right? Right now, I'm making YouTube videos. I love YouTube. I think it's the best platform to be on if you want to have a message that changes the world. YouTube is, for me, should be your number one spot. In 10 years, it may be something different. In five years, it may be something different. In 30 years, it's definitely going to be something different. So the how gets to evolve and change. It might be hologram Evan, you know, beaming into your living room or I'm coming into your contact lenses or whatever it is, right? This, I'm sure it's going to be crazy. That will evolve and change with time, but your who and your why stay constant forever. And so the process for some people is really quick and they figure it out right away. For some people, they have to journal, they have to meditate, they have to, they have to go through the exercises and figure it out. But if it takes you two weeks to figure out your most important core value, who you are and your purpose that then serves you for the rest of your life, to go serve and help the world, that's a good trade-off. I take that, and I think you should too. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that question of the day, I wanna know what is your vision? What is your vision for your life, for yourself, for, for what you wanna create, what's the problem you're gonna solve? What is your vision that is inspiring for you, motivating for you? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. And if you made it this far in a video, you're still here watching and you promise, you commit that you're gonna do something about it. We take action here in Believe Nation. You're promising to take action in your life today based off of what you learned here in this video. I wanna celebrate you. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. It's really interesting, I'll share a little story. I was walking here for the interview, so walking to the subway and I was at a traffic light and this lady turned and looked at me and I was like, yeah, whatever. And, uh, and then we crossed and then she was walking a little bit behind me and then she came up next to me and she goes, are you the guy with the YouTube videos? And I go like, which ones? And she's not the motivational ones. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> Didn't know what YouTube videos she was talking about. Anyway, she started talking and uh, we caught the same train. And one of the things she said is that, you know, I don't know what I want in life. I have no idea what I want in life. So if you have no idea what you want in life, how then can you prioritize your life? You can't prioritize. And if you ask most people, what do you want in life? They're like, not oh, to be happy. Happiness is not a focus. You know, happiness is not a priority in life. Happiness comes as a byproduct of living a certain way. But first you have to be super clear of how you want to live your life. What is your life about? What's your purpose in life? And most people don't know. And because they don't know their purpose, then they don't know their priorities. The purpose defines your priorities. And once you have your clear of your purpose, your purpose defines your priorities. Once you know your priorities, then you can focus on them. But if you don't know your purpose, then you don't know your priorities. So to answer your questions, how are people dealing with priorities? Not very well, because most people have no idea what their priorities in life are. If you want to see how Bob Proctor attracts what he wants, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there attracting what you actually want. I think James Allen put it very well in his little book, As a Man Thinketh. 